Hi folks and welcome to the screencast where I'm going to introduce you to the tissues of the human body. First of all, a tissue is a group of similar cells with similar functions. There are lots of different kinds of cells in the body. In fact, there are 210 different kinds. So in order to study them, we have to group them based on their basic functions. And so we find that there are four principal types of tissues in the body. They are epithelial tissue, which is covering and lining. It also forms glands. We have connective tissue, which protects and supports other tissues in, in an organ. We have muscle tissue, responsible for movement. And we have nervous tissue, which initiates and transmits nerve impulses for monitoring and responding to stimuli. This diagram here illustrates all of the different kinds of tissues that we'll be looking at in the body and primarily where they could be found as well. It's an interesting diagram to look at. I'm going to try to provide you with one in class. Let's look a little bit more closely at each one of these different types of tissues. First, let's look at epithelium. These do not go in any particular order. Epith epithelium can be divided into glandular epithelium, which is for the secretion or excretion of cellular material. The difference between the words secretion and or excretion is that secretion is the elimination of a useful product such as an oil or mucus whereas excretion is the elimination of waste such as uh, sweat or salts from the body. Here we have uh, a type of gland called an exocrine gland, uh, one of two types of glands that we'll find in the body. You're not going to have to learn all these different kinds of exocrine glands, but what you should know is that an exocrine gland is an exocrine gland because it has a duct which allows it to secrete or excrete a material into a body cavity or surface. And here you see the duct coming out of each one of these. The next kind of gland is called an endocrine gland, and these are the glands of the endocrine system. These do not have ducts. In fact, they produce their product, primarily hormones, and these hormones diffuse into the blood or the body tissue uh, from the gland. We're not going to spend an awful lot of time studying these because we'll look at the endocrine glands more closely when we study the endocrine system. What we are going to be looking a little bit more closely at here are the covering and lining epithelium. Uh, these are classified based on two criteria. By classifying them, we mean naming them. First of all, we look at cell shape. Some epithelium has some flat cells, which we call squamous. Others have cuboidal, three-dimensional cube-shaped cells called cuboidal. And then finally, a columnar. These are like cuboidal, but they're elongated, and they're also three-dimensional. Now, all covering and lining epithelium is avascular. And that word means that they do not have blood vessels in between the cells. The next way we classify covering and lining epithelium is by the layering arrangement. Either it's one layer in simple or two or more layers in stratified. So let's take a look at some microscopic pictures of these actual tissues as they occur in nature. Here you see simple squamous epithelium. The arrows are pointing to individual cells uh, of these single, single layered flat cells of the lung. What you're actually looking at is an air sac of the lung, which uh, we call alveoli. Now, simple squamous epithelium is perfect for the job here because we need to allow for gases such as oxygen and carbon dioxide to diffuse into the blood from these air sacs. So wherever diffusion into or out of an organ is needed, you're going to find simple squamous epithelium. Another place where we find this is in the tiny capillaries of the circulatory system. Next, we'll look at simple cuboidal epithelium, a single layer of cuboidal shaped cells. In the diagram here, you'll see a circle show up. You're looking at the ends, uh, uh, the cut ends of tubes in the kidneys. Uh, the kidneys are loaded with all sorts of tubes, and each of these tubes are lined with simple cuboidal epithelium. The dark purple spots in the micrograph of the microscopic slide here are the nuclei. Not all of them show up, but uh, you can see the lighter pinkish around them. That's the rest of the cell. 
Now if you were to go in and draw in the boundaries of each of these cells, you'd find that uh, each of these tubes are lined with simple cuboidal epithelium. Here in this diagram here you can see what these tubes would look like if we were to pull them out and look at them longitudinally. Next let's look at simple columnar epithelium. These are columnar shaped cells. I'll outline one here for you. Okay. And you can see that indeed they are elongated. The nucleus is that dark purple spot in the middle. And you see the apical surface here. This surface here is open to the outside as all epithelium has an, what we call an apical surface where there's no other tissue on top. There would be a tissue on the bottom. This is a different type of tissue underneath. Uh, it's a partic particular type of tissue called um, connective tissue. A place where we find simple columnar epithelium is in the lining of the intestines. Here you see the inside lining of the intestine where these, there are these long finger-like projections and lining these would be uh, the simple columnar epithelium. And since it's a simple layer, it's ideal for the absorption of nutrients out of, um, uh, out of the intestine into the bloodstream. Now let's look at some layered epithelium. Here we have stratified squamous epithelium, many layers thick of these flat cells. And what you actually see here in this diagram you see the little black dots, those are the nuclei of these cells. The cells, if you can make it out here, are very flattened and you can look at these different layers of the cells here. This would be your epidermis, your top layer of skin. It starts down here where the living cells are produced and as time goes on these cells are pushed up and eventually reach the apical surface where they are allow for an awful lot of protection. These cells are dead because they're so far away from the nutrient source in the layer down below. Here in this picture here, the epidermis or the stratified epithelium would be this layer here, from the dark, dark layer all the way to the apical surface. Next is stratified cuboidal epithelium. The best place to find this is in the tubules of the testes. The, the dark spots represent the nuclei and there are many layers. Here's the inside of the tube where actually sperm would be being produced. And the larger round structure is actually a cross section of the tube lined with these many layers of cuboidal shaped cells. Now there are exceptions to this cell shape and layering arrangement. Uh, and one of those is this pseudostratified epithelium. The prefix pseudo means false and so in this case it's not really stratified epithelium. And this is, this is unique to the upper respiratory system especially. What we see here are one layer of cells. The red dots represent nuclei. Some, here's the apical surface. This type of pseudostratified epithelium happens to have cilia on the surface. These are hair-like projections which help to move fluids on the surface of this cell. Now underneath here is the connective tissue. What's unique to this pseudostratified epithelium are these cells right here. Some of the columnar cells are actually modified to produce mucus. These modified mucus cells are called goblet cells because they're shaped like a wine goblet and the mucus is produced on the inside and is secreted onto the surface where the cilia can move it along. The pseudostratified epithelium helps to protect the lining of the respiratory system by keeping it moist and trapping it and trapping any dust or microorganisms that could come into the respiratory system. The cilia help mu move the mucus out up and out of the respiratory system to the back of the throat where it can be swallowed and destroyed in the digestive system. And so we see here where the upper respiratory system is. This is the windpipe or the trachea and this is where we would find uh, a lining of the pseudostratified epithelium. Another exception to the layering arrangement in the cell shape is this transitional epithelium. The dark outlines are the nuclei of individual uh, cells that um, all have different kinds of shapes. Okay, so we call them transitional. 
and there, there are several layers of these cells. And these, shell, these cells, unlike other epithelium, have an elastic quality which allow them to, to change shape and allow the organ that they line to really expand. Where you'll find this is in the lining of the urinary bladder, where the urinary bladder can be as small as a walnut when it's empty or as large as a grapefruit when it's really full. So it needs some distension or stretching ability and the transitional epithelium allows this to happen. So that ends part one of your introduction to histology and epithelial tissue in particular. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, be sure to write them down and bring them to class. And watch this video again to be sure that you can recognize these tissues under the microscope and be able to describe them as well. What might also be helpful is if you were to create a chart with the illustrations of these tissues. That includes the function and typical locations. See you back in class.